Welcome to the Mike on Much podcast. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. I'm here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman, as well as our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. Uh, did you say something on the mic while I was doing the intro, Max? I, I was multitasking. I'm doing an Instagram story. You're doing too. an Insta story, and I just heard you go, <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> that, that is. Went, That's me. <laughs> uh, we're also here with Erica. Erica, we need to give her a title because she's here. She's on the fourth mic. Yeah, you had double E uh, last week. E-E? She's yeah. Erica the engineer, Erica, Erica the engineer. producer, and Erica. What, what I do you guess, got? like, Erica the intern sounds nice, but she's not the intern. <laughs> <laughs> she got it. Is she? Well, is she? I like it. I Erica like the unpaid intern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. You get real buzzworthy. Yeah. Um, and now you're freaking like her out. That. She's like unpaid. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll give you some money. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> some cash, Erica. <laughs> some cash, Erica. Yeah. Erica, do you have any preferred nicknames? Any I nick- like Erica the intern. It's like Paul the intern from yeah. MTV. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good callback. Yeah. Okay. Erica the intern it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Done. Sweet. But you know, you're so much more than the intern. Thanks. Yeah. Just your so the friend. listeners know. I'm sure your mom might listen to this. And she's like, what? It's like, you're like producing your engineering. You're I don't think my mom stuff. listens anymore. Okay. Speaking oh. of uh, of listening, <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, Danica, uh, didn't, um, she doesn't often or traditionally listen to our podcast. Mm-hmm. And so I've always kind of like, oh, you, you know, you might want to, you know, support me. So like, just kind of like a little kind of thing. But ultimately, I'm like, you do your thing. She's a busy lady. Yeah. But so now that she's home on mat leave with our daughter Winona, uh, she has a ton of time. So mm-hmm. she, uh, you know, while she's doing stuff with the baby, she'll throw the podcast on. So now she's a regular listener, nice. which I thought would be a good thing. But now I am constantly getting notes, <laughs> which I know. She's full of criticism. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Like, like literally, she's like, oh, I listened to the pod. Like, she listened to the first Freedom or whatever. So she had some notes on the names. And mm-hmm. she thought, it, you know, she's like, it meandered a little bit, but it came together in the end. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> and then after tighter. episode two aired, I, I got a call. And she was like, uh, you realize with the Bieber um, hoax with the fake pregnancy, like in the mom community, that actually is very taboo. And you guys sound super ignorant. <laughs> I, said, I feel like that's going to be a running theme every day. I on said, show. Danica, first of all, I said, I can't speak for anybody in that situation. And I thought I took a pretty pragmatic view. She goes, yes, well, Shane was pretty definitive. I, go, <laughs> I don't speak for Shane. <laughs> No, but come on. Like, uh, my wife runs a pretty prominent blog where she's all about it. Just because someone has a blog doesn't mean you speak for the community. Well, let me finish my thought. And I'm not saying she she does speak for the community, but she's definitely a part of the community. And she gets Uh probably over 100 DMs a day. Mm -hmm. And she noted to me, she said, by the way, Shan, this is huge in the community. But anyone who actually does care about it. Has half a brain. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, Max, you're you're starting off. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just saying, okay, if something like that if something like that is going to trigger you, yeah. it's like you're not going to get very far in not being a depressed person because you're actually going to be triggered even by people having normal pregnancies or anything happening. It's, yeah. it's just a little joke and people's intent is just to be silly. They're not trying to get out and mm-hmm. hurt you or remind you that you can't procreate. And my wife said, by and large, people are not bothered then by it, but it is a vocal minority who's upset by it which is any little thing like this you're going to get a vocal minority who's upset to complain about it and if you're bothered by it you're not going to be a happy person in life because people are always going to have triggering things that are going to bother you so i think it's fine to do a joke like that's that's going to bother a very small portion of very sensitive people yeah there's your stance that's your position like alex's best friend literally is having a ton of trouble conceiving and she talks about it all the time my wife did a whole youtube post about it and she's not bothered by anything like this and just because some people are doesn't mean we're all handcuffed in what we can do sure i guess i guess but the, i'm, I'm the, not the, i guess it's like bieber was being insensitive i guess is yeah the position. And, and my in my opinion i th- and obviously i'm not a, a woman who can't get pregnant but i definitely was someone who wanted to have a child and went through problems and i'm not I wasn't sensitive to something like that. Someone else pulling a, a dumb prank or something like that, it's not going to trigger me enough to make them t- to not want to do that. I may not like it, but I'm not going to chastise anyone for doing a, a joke where their intent is just to be silly. I mean, this is a, sort of a bigger uh, conversation we're having on every issue in, a, in society, mm-hmm. which is how sensitive should we be to people's personal story, which is, which is the thing that we all have to. But, and, and just because with. I'm a man doesn't mean I haven't been through the struggle of wanting to have a kid and not being able. Sure, to, no, know. but but then there's there's an, an, another version of you out there that has had much worse struggles, and should we be more sensitive to to the plight of that somebody else has gone through? Well, well, you're saying, but like, which is, you're saying it expands beyond even say this specific issue. It's oh, the idea it, of being able to empathize with any sort of like yeah. um, vocal minority that it's like I can't say that you know. 
what it's like to be to have a struggle, say, like as a minority in, in America, because I'm not. So it'd be hard for me to presume that it's like you're being too sensitive. Like, yeah. it's not my position to say it, I guess. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And by, by the way, like this is uh, and uh, Justin Bieber was trying to be a comedian in that moment. And, yeah, like, and, and you'll never get out of a comedy show. Was, you have to avoid almost everything if, yeah, if, if that's your stance. We're talking. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we're talking about uh, the state of comedy, really, on a certain <laughs> level, too, because he was trying to make a comedic joke. And, and it and, all comes down to intent. Do you actually think Bieber was out to hurt women who can't conceive? The answer is no. Well, no. The, and like, I was just giving my opinion, right? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying people shouldn't be offended or they're not offended or it's not a big issue. I'm saying I don't think it should be because it was a very innocuous thing he was trying to do. And someone else would say, well, you don't know what it's like to live in my shoes and it, it doesn't actually upset me and that's that. And that's okay. And that's, that's your truth and that's their truth. And this is, um, you know, I'm Chris D'Elia. I was listening to his podcast the other day and he was talking about how literally, you, you know, you, it's very hard to, to make jokes that uh, if you're making a joke that everybody is good with, it's probably not a good joke. It's, oh, that's almost impossible right. because it's very easy to... Uh, to be upset uh, about, as you said in the last episode, literally anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it's a it's a bad precedent to start in the comedy world because sure, you know, you talk about all the perks you get a lot of time on the pod, mm -hmm. and a lot of people aren't as fortunate as you are. So yeah. that might trigger a lot of people and make people yeah. really upset or well, feel Bieber's bad not, about themselves. Bieber's not a professional comedian, and I think that no, like, but we're all allowed <laughs> to joke. I'm not a professional comedian either by a long stretch, and I like to joke every other word. Sure. It uh, so I, I guess the, the the point is it's like is this something that is like uh, hurtful to people that can't conceive or have lost babies? Yes. So is it insensitive? But it's over, yes. It's, over, it, it's not insensitive because by and large women aren't affected by but it. But the argument would be sensitive the argument would be though that it, it's not your position to say it's not insensitive because you you're not you can't get like you're not a pregnant woman that has lost a baby. No, but I'm a man who tried to have a child. And uh, you well, have what's one. The, I do. Yeah, but I'm also. Uh, have been there and did not care about that stuff. That's good for you. But I'm saying there's a lot of people, clearly, if this is like a meme that's in the mommy community or whatever. Yeah, like and, about, my, and I also consult with my wife, yeah. who I would consider, a, like, not an expert, but close to it. Yeah, if I just give some context for uh, what Alex does, just so my, our My wife are runs aware. a maternity blog called This Family Tree, and she deals with this stuff all the time. She also has a YouTube channel, and the very first topic she had was about being having difficulty to conceive. It's a, it's all about miscarriages. So yeah. like my wife is in this world, I'm telling you. And my wife told me that it's not as big of an issue. There are a, is a vocal minority, but to a joke like this with very uh, innocuous intent, like Bieber was not trying to hurt anyone. Completely agree. To come down on him like that and say he shouldn't have done it to me is ridiculous because then you're going to start policing Everything. Listen, I think there's. Uh, you, you pointed this out last episode. There, there, I think there's a lot of this issue comes from a lot of Bieber fans who are just genuinely happy for him, uh, and then th that he was going to have a baby, and then they found out that they were being pranked. That's number one. Number two, there, there probably is a vocal minority that of people that are upset about uh, you know any joke being made on that issue. Right. And you're also probably right that a lot of people can kind of. Go through the day, see a dumb April Fool's joke, and go, okay, that kind of bothers me a little bit, but I'm not going to make a big stink about it or not be bothered by it at all. So I think we're, we're generally in agreement. The only point that Mike and I were making is that you can understand that whether or not you agree, someone can feel that. I, I, and I didn't deny that. Someone yeah. can feel that way. I think they're being overly sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand how that to is, a joke you tr it's just it, i guess that's condescending though because it's like it's like it'd be like um if if mickey rourke is or sorry mickey rooney is playing like an asian in an old movie and people are like don't play that clip anymore on television because it's incredibly offensive it's like well mickey rourke didn't know he was offending Asians. he thought he was just being funny to the population it's like right it's, and i wouldn't say that uh, mickey rourke should be chastised rooney, rooney. mickey rooney rourke is or a mickey rourke for the matter. <laughs> no no and i and i honestly wouldn't think yeah. he should be chastised now we all know better and it's considered racist i do not consider that on the same level if mickey rooney still did that with that knowledge i wouldn't think that would be a good thing to do so if bieber did it again then it would be offensive i don't think it is this universally offensive thing in fact i think more women are cool with it than aren't who are trying to conceive right. yeah I, I don't have those numbers and again, I, mean, I don't think this is a particularly th this example is a pretty light example of of um you know, someone's personal experience and, and taking yeah. offense, I think. But there are many other issues. And this is a 
bigger conversation about intersectionality and your lived experience. Yes, that's uh, what I'm trying to get at. Yes, yeah, where and th this is also just my opinion, and I can be wrong, and I'm yeah. not saying I'm right. I'm just saying from things I've picked up, and I've never heard people complaining about this joke until the internet rewards people for having uh, an opposing view and gives them likes for being a contrarian. Uh, I've seen this joke every fucking year on my Facebook. It's That's a hack true. joke. I don't like this joke. I don't <laughs> think it's funny, yeah. but I acknowledge that people are trying to be funny and they're trying to be innocent about it. Yeah. yeah. They're just people who aren't very creative. Right? I agree. And I think that's what Bieber suffers from more than anything. And I don't like people who complain about jokes like this because I do think in the grand scheme, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, if you're triggered by it, you're not going to get there, very there, far in life because you're going to be depressed all the time. Yeah. And, and maybe that's fair advice. Uh, yeah. There, there's there's two parts of it. There's one part where it's like we should be empathetic to other people's lived experience. And and I think that's an important part of like the human uh, human interactions is just kind of recognize that even though I don't totally understand it, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you truly feel that way and I'm going to have empathy for you. On the other hand, and then there's this other thing that runs alongside it, which is just the state of comedy, which is if you go to a, like a comedy club, they are making fun of people's deepest insecurities and deepest lived experiences. That is like almost the point of comedy and making light of that. And that is also true to that art form. So totally, yeah. I don't know what to do about that. But, but, but. let's say a large portion of people who didn't have a weren't as lucky as you mm -hmm. were really triggered by it when you brag about your free comp to Les Mis and all that stuff you get. <laughs> like, would you stop doing it if it bothered maybe ten percent of the population, or would you say suck it up? Uh, well, suck it up because there's like there's chicken and egg to your point. So when you say like oh, they won't get very far if they're triggered by a joke about um, having a baby. So if if you can't conceive or you've had a miscarriage. You might be depressed anyway because of that specific thing that you 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 really want more than anything. Sure. So then that joke like uh, maybe exasperates your experience on this earth. So you are like like is it like are you an overly sensitive person because that specific joke triggers you, or is it that you your experience leading up to that has been so devastating that a joke like that just is really like deflating and brutal? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's hard because again like I don't I can't be I can't put myself in the position I can't be like you're being overly sensitive because to that person it might be like the, the worst thing in the world like a cancer joke or an AIDS joke if you're somebody who's gone through those examples yep. now those are considered taboo obviously because it's like more people have experience with people that have passed away from cancer or maybe like oh HIV is this devastating thing so they go don't make those jokes like they're fucking highly insensitive so it's like but for some I guess in this you know conversation it's like well you know Pretending you have a baby when you're actually getting a dog is uh, so you're gonna say something, Max? No, no, go ahead. Well, is, is maybe like it's like well you're being oversensitive because he's just trying to be funny. Well, if, if he was like, uh, I'm really sick. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Everyone knows. Well, he would never do that because it's a stupid joke. Maybe the people that have had that experience. And again, I, to your point, like I can't I can't speak for them. I don't know. I'm not in that position. And I bet you a, a, there's a group of them that would be like, yeah, people are being oversensitive. Listen, like I've had to live with this miscarriage or the fact that we can't conceive and it is hard, but I know Bieber wasn't trying to be difficult, but there also might be like a larger group of those, that sample size, you'd have to ask them who would be like, actually that fucking hurt that killed because it's like every time I see even a baby on Instagram, it hurts. And I know no one's trying to be hurtful. This was a willful act of like mischief, even though his intent wasn't to like devastate the person. Everything sort of hurts when you're that, I guess in that situation, I would guess again, to your point about like the internet rewards people that have contrarian views, I think a lot of times people will be like, "You're being racist," but like maybe the, the minority groups like actually it's not that bad. But there's a there's a, a culture built around trying to to write a think piece that basically takes the opposing view. So like CNN or all these people picking up the story, it is good for clicks in that sense, I think. But it doesn't discount the fact that there's a group of uh, people that probably find that joke brutal. And right, that, men and, and women, right? Because 100%. there's men who are infertile. Absolutely, also. absolutely, yeah. Uh, okay, let, let, let's move on. Uh, that was good. Uh, Erica, do you have any thoughts on this one? No? I'm in agreement with you guys. I'm in agreement with, like, Max and Mike, kind of. on Just, like, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. You know what I mean? Sure, and I am, and I understand why someone could be upset by that, but I get upset by a lot of stuff. But I'm what I'm saying is I don't think Bieber shouldn't be able to do a thing like that or be 
removed from the internet or whatever no, they're trying I agree. to. I agree. With that. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I agree. I agree. Trying to remove from the internet. I, I think. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know what. Pe- I that think would be a hilarious. Deep like, platforming step. is a huge thing. People Other, are trying to do it sure, all the time. Yeah, yeah, canceling culture, people, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I mean, the other thing I'd say is that I think uh, Shane, to your question, w- would I stop making jokes about my free comps? I think it's an, uh, it's a matter of being self aware and recognizing the context of who you are. Bieber's not a comedian. Bieber is known to be like an in- more or less an inspirational. Role so model. it's like you're not a comedian. Stay in your lane. You're a basketball player. Well, he's don't talk about, about his politics. life. Like that's happening in his life. So he's just sharing stories about his, his life and his experience. Bieber was making. Bieber was getting a dog, but he made a joke. We yeah. joke all the time about Max getting comps, and that yeah. could really trigger people who are less fortunate. I mean, I mean, if, if that was actually a thing that people well, were how complaining do you know about, not? J- just because they're not, maybe people are uh, scared to say it. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. If that was a wait, thing, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, honestly, wait. I think I would, I would. If someone was like Max, you know, that really bums me out because I haven't had anything handed to me free, and, that, and I'd go, okay. Maybe maybe that's something we'll stay away from. And, and but it's I think, a false equivalency. Like he's talking about his life and, yeah. and his good fortune, and we make jokes about it. But those things are happening to him. Bieber was getting a dog, so if he was talking about getting a dog, that'd be fine. I know, but maybe the uh, the fact that we're bringing it up so often, it's rubbing it in people's face. It's aspirational. Okay, that that's your view. Some people may be offended by that, Mike. Right. But I'm that's saying, all but, I'm saying. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he did though. That we wasn't go the in truth. circles forever. I feel. Yeah. I all this. But, but Bieber literally like missed. Dr- he said he was having a baby and he wasn't. Max gets free comps all the time. You're mm-hmm. having a good life. And by the, the, by the way, the same people who uh, get upset by this, they also get upset when people say. Uh, well, on Mother's Day, this my my dog baby celebrated this. Oh, and they yeah. can, they consider their their animals their children. I see, like fur babies. Fur babies, yeah. That's so. offensive to people that have children. I've seen those posts what? before. There's <laughs> people that they? get up, upset about like uh, I've seen posts where like people you know Facebook. Like I don't sure. know how how if yeah. this is an epidemic or if it's just people you used to go to high school with or whatever. Uh-huh. But you'll see things about like when when people post about their fur babies uh-huh. and it's like well it's not a real baby and it's like I just don't understand why you'd want to like take people down who are happy about their dogs their or their dog. cats that, or their that's pets. That's a weird nonsense. Yeah, it's like, don't diminish <laughs> their situation just because they don't have a real child. But it's the same argument with the fur people. I think people have more of a leg to stand on in the, the Bieber argument because, like you're saying, it is mischief. I'm also not saying I'm right or Bieber was right. I am just think people should be allowed to make a joke like that and not have people jump all over them because you're going to get triggered ov- over almost anything if that's your stance. I would think if you made it in ignorance, like you said, it, it, you, we can understand. Going forward, I wouldn't think you should make a joke. I don't think anyone baby. should make that joke. It's yeah. a bad joke. That's all we're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, no. I just mean it's unfunny, and it's been made like it's made all the time. It's like, unfunny I, and insensitive. I saw twenty of those. Sure, I guess then everything is could be misconstrued as insensitive. In fact, the other day I got a message from someone telling me that the title "Free Dumb" was potentially racist. So I guess we can't go with freedom now because there's a small percentage of the population who may think that's racist. What was the argument? Something about relating to Martin Luther King and making fun of it. Like I, it was a text sent to me. Hmm. We're saying why is the Bieber thing offensive, and we're explaining why it is. Like it's like it's like it's like someone does something. We try to figure out what the explanation is. Then we all either come to a consensus as a society. So, so if I came in and said, "Guys, yeah. I have an announcement. I won the lottery." Yeah. And then you're like, "Congrats!" And we all celebrate. And the next day, I go, "I didn't win the lottery." April Fools. That was an April Fools' prank, yeah. actually. And <laughs> would, would homeless people like get upset? I'd be. I'd love if homeless people listen to our podcast because be it's cool. more listeners. But again, <laughs> uh, I guess. But they could in like you, you know whatever in their in communities. the library. Yeah. On their computers, which would be very nice. Well, there's shelters and stuff. They might crank it. Yeah. So I guess so. Why is it for the homeless people? I, I, I think I think that that I mean, if we're gonna like do sort of like I think it's a false equivalency in the sense that like why it's something that a lot of people will never have a chance to get. It's me joking about my good fortune. That's absolutely not true. A right. lot of people consider having a child good fortune. Jay, it feels like you're very angry just about like the state of outrage culture. Uh, I, I I am yeah, yeah. <laughs> like th- there is a line and I, I I agree it's hard to draw that line yeah and you know I'm in no place to do it but it's it's like that thing we were talking to Nirvana the band they said it uh, the the state recognized porn like they couldn't define it but they know it when they see it yeah. it's like that was something worth being outraged over and in my opinion yeah. I don't think this is anything to be outraged <laughs> over like it's horrible if you can't conceive a child and you mm-hmm. really want to and you want to have a child in your likeness but you know. Adopt. Yeah, and by, by the way, I think one of the reasons why we even have this conversation is that, uh, like, you know, I'm on Twitter all day. You're on Twitter all day. Are you on Twitter at all? I'm, I'm on Mike. How much Twitter? Mike, how much? Erica, you're on Twitter all day, right? 
A Not bit. really, no. Okay, well, I think I think if you're online, there's a very good, or and you're reading the headlines, say that that come up on your Facebook, there's a good chance that you are hearing the expressions and the voices of people on pretty on the fringes uh, of the left and the right. And I think there's a lot of people. There's more people than we realize that are kind of in that middle seventy five percent. And so not on the, the far 8% on the left or far 8% on the right. You're that, hearing the 5% and the 5% yeah, I Yeah, I think bottom. a lot Completely of times. I agree. Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of people actually have a more moderate stance on, on all these things. Completely yeah. agree. Yeah. Which, which I think, uh, when, so whenever you get like exasperated by like the state of affairs or what we can talk and what we can talk, I think, I think we can often agree that, like, no, this is a reasonable thing or that's a bad joke and we can have a civil conversation. Well, because I am in the middle. Yeah, no, my voice is never heard because I'm not passionate enough about it and I would yeah. never get in some online debate. Yeah. And I think in, in, in culture, to Shane's point earlier, we do reward these like hot take think pieces that yeah. are like, this is why Bieber's thing is bad or this is why Bieber's thing is inoffensive. Mm-hmm. And so people write those things because it generates clicks and arguments and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I tend to personally just fall on the side of, it's like, if you can sort of make somebody's experience on this earth a little better by like not making the joke or acknowledging that it's like, ah, you know what, that was kind of insensitive to your situation, which I maybe don't know. I'm like, I just tend to lean on that side, which I know is viewed sometimes as like left or like sort of like more like, uh, oh, stop being so sensitive. I'm just like, it's not hard to sort of just be a little kinder by maybe like trying to empathize with even if it's one vocal woman that's like I can't conceive and you ruined my fucking day I'd be like ah that sucks well I think of all the you. joy that joke potentially brought to people like, like, to the, like all the, doing the plus that, minus on the that's map. all he was yeah. trying to do yeah so if it made more people happy than sad is it worth You're it utilitarian yeah, yeah. Um, what yeah. if it made someone who was having the most depressed day happy well actually I mean that's actually a good uh, I mean uh, thing to bring back to the state of stand up comedy because I'm sure Chris Rock a lot of his material would make somebody or various parts of the population upset, but he also makes so many people laugh and so many, and he has so many interesting insights. And so I'd probably go on the plus minus scale. I think we need to keep Chris Rock around. What if a joke Chris Rock made made someone kill themselves? I'm sure that's happened in the past, not from Chris specifically, but comedians doing yeah. that. And yeah. I think that's well. This is like a larger question, but where we're heading as a society and what we choose is acceptable and what's not acceptable, and like sort of like the meanness in comedy and jokes. And it's like, are we trying to ascend as a people to a more sort of like uh, utopian society where it's like we can still make jokes, but not at the expense of like weight or appearance or you know what I mean? Like comedy. Almost every joke is at the expense of something, though. Yeah. To it truly is. be funny, it needs to be a little bit jarring and cutting. Totally. I can't, I can't think of one that's not. Well, great. This is the thing. Great comedians. Like, you know, like if you go to a Yuck Yucks on a night, like, you know, and there's some hack and he basically starts doing crowd work and he just starts making fun of like people's weight, let's say. Mm-hmm. So you can tell it's like this guy is a hack. This is like this is playground humor. But there's a way to make a joke that doesn't attack that that is still funny. And this is why the, the best mm-hmm. professionals are so great at it, I think. OK, let's say I lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. And I'm Your like, dream. yeah, that is my dream. Uh, but but you already look great. And people think that. Thanks. That's all I was fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but what I was going to say is, let's say I'm, I'm on stage. I'm a comedian and I've lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. And I was like, man, I used to be a fat ass. <laughs> and I'm talking about myself. Yeah. You know, I'm being uh, self-deprecating and I'm making a joke. That could make someone in the audience very uncomfortable. Now, should I, should I not be self-deprecating? Like often I've talked about my nose yeah. and uh, made fun of myself. So should I not do that if other people are very sensitive about their own appearance? I mean, I think like it could trigger someone. I think uh, it could th- absolutely. I, I know, but I'm saying is is it is it not worth the risk? Should I just be quiet here because on this podcast I was under the assumption I was supposed to be funny to some extent, and I can't always gauge where the line is. Every day I'm taking mild risks and swinging a little bit for the fences. Mind you, I'm still trying to stay inside the park, but that's very hard. And until I pass the line and someone tells me I've offended them. I don't know where I'm going. And even if someone does well, tell I me I offend a, them, I don't a, even know if I want to change. An, an unspoken uh, understanding that it, when you're playing in the world of comedy, there is more wiggle room, right? Uh, like to, right. To, and, to, I to think, to, and I think and I think your role on the show is interesting because on one hand, like on the regular podcast, it's like a somewhat serious talk show, at least during the interview portion when mm-hmm. we're trying to like kind of get to the root of these artists' careers. Uh, but then the the end, or often when you're on, it, it's more of a comedic segment. So, but so there is a bit of a. a but to Shane's point, that, it yeah. is a delicate alchemy mm-hmm. yeah. that nobody knows the answer to. To yeah. your point, like like one person can say something, and everyone's like, ha, 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 "I nailed it." Someone else says the same thing, and everyone's going, "What a fucking insensitive piece of shit!" And it's like, wait a second, I just said the same thing, and that is kind of like society though. Mm-hmm. Like, why do some people? Why is Trump getting away with everything as, as like in a social sense? 
grab her by the pussy, all this stuff. It's like he keeps succeeding, whereas if anybody else did that, they would not. And so it's like there's a lot of people trying to get to the root of like, why is this happening? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Is it bad? Is there inefficiencies in the system? How can someone take advantage of it? How can we sort of like close those gaps? This is kind of the the, the time we're living in right now, but I do think it is incredibly hard. I agree with you. I, I, I empathize. With anyone trying to make like bold jokes, you know, like on the pod, I made the I made a stupid off the cuff joke about you being in a relationship with your mother last episode. Yeah, and and afterward, I was like, I think I might pull that. And you're like, no, leave it in. It was funny. It's like, yeah, but it was a dark joke. Like mm-hmm. we're all sort of like gauging things, and we're going to say things in bars and amongst us that are like jokes that are like we would never say in public. And if my mom came to me and was like, I found it really insensitive that Mike implied you and I were having intercourse, I'd, <laughs> I'd say, Mom, you're being overly sensitive get over it yeah i would yeah and that's mm-hmm. you know maybe that's not the right way but i definitely feel that's not uh across the and dial. i would hope that it was such an absurd premise although dark that everyone would know it was like of, co- including of, her. of course but yeah. i think bieber putting the dog on the the fetus was very ridiculous yeah i mean yeah. There, there are a litany of issues that come up every single day uh, w- so incest is cool, but <laughs> well, I mean, dog misdirection is not. Well, Game of Thrones has really normalized it as a joking <laughs> platform, I think. You no, know, but but I'm just saying that it's like who gets to be the judge of you're being too sensitive or no? Okay, we'll be a little more well, sensitive. That, I'm curious time. to know who like how many of those outraged people who are commenting on Justin Bieber's post were like 17 year old girls who had never been in the situation before, just exactly. trying to be the like social mm-hmm. justice warrior great qu- type. Great question. Like, well, and, I feel and like how that's many cool people, to be, like the, to be the, the social abstract. justice. And like for me to sit here, like if Chris Rock like makes a racist joke and then I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, like that was so racist. That doesn't really work because he's black. No, but yeah. you, like, you know, no that you, does work. Am I allowed yeah. to tell you like certain groups of people what they should be offended about? Or should I just like, hey, remove myself from the situation. I'm a woman, but I've never tried to conceive. And like, I don't really have an opinion because I've never mm-hmm. been there. So I'm just going to like l- sit this one out. It'd be like a you white know? person saying Chris Rock shouldn't use the N word. Like yep. writing a think piece because like yeah. Chris does use it in his act. And then it'd be like as a white person sits down, they're going to write a big think piece about this is why Chris Rock shouldn't use the N word. And, and here's the thing. Write that piece. We live in a free country. You have full autonomy. But I would go, eh. Is it really that person's position to like write an outrage piece mm-hmm. on a and, black and comedian? I, and using I do that think word? a large percentage of people who said they're offended or commented on that post actually weren't offended. They just wanted to comment. You do get some attention for yeah. doing that, but I do think some people legit were offended. My only argument to that is some people are offended by almost anything. Case in point, the freedom thing. Like I do not want to be labeled a racist when that is not the intent. It's a pretty good goal to have in general. <laughs> but like That's my one life like- goal. <laughs> Shane's ambitious. All right, let's get to the next subject. Okay, we're right, we're on. Yeah. All right, so on the agenda today, I don't think we're going to get to all three. No, uh, let's, let's sc- scrap Billie Eilish. Okay, we're not going to yeah. talk about Billie Eilish. Maybe we'll, we'll roll what, over the What video episode. were you talking about? Uh, she did a, a variety uh, for Variety Magazine, I think it was. It was cool concept. But one year later? Yeah, one year later. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Did you enjoy that? It was sad. Yeah. It was interesting. Think- I thought it was fascinating. I mean, we... We'll roll it over, maybe. Maybe yeah. we'll do it because maybe we'll do it was like four months old or something. Anyway. And she, by the way, is a very polarizing person. I was looking into it, and a lot of people are saying she's contributing to like this sadness culture uh-huh. that's making people be more suicidal in a way. That's so a her music is that's a tease for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's such an exciting so, fun tease. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, let's take her off the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Biff Naked 2.0 uh, That was funny So we are going to get to uh, Felicity Huffman And obviously Lori Loughlin uh, And the whole uh, College admissions scandal uh, And then after that We're going to talk about SNC uh, Lavalin uh, Which is obviously- Erica's favorite subject That's the main reason Why we brought it up Because uh, I was hanging out With Greg last night And he said you're very passionate About the SNC Lavalin story He told you that? Yeah <laughs> Is that a secret? No. <laughs> Are you passionate? I told about him it? not to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm not pat. Well, sort of. I think it's important to talk about on this podcast. That's okay, good. Go. All right. Youth of Canada. So that is obviously a, a very uh, a politically uh, a political Canadian story, uh, which we'll get to if you're listening to the states of the UK. Uh, but first, let's talk about these uh, college admissions uh, scandals that are going on. Get everybody up to speed, just in case you missed it. A couple okay. Weeks ago. So obviously, there's this huge. Um, if you haven't read about it, uh, FBI investigation called Operation Varsity Blues, um, and it was basically a sting operation. There was this guy in California who had like gamed the system so that he could find a way to get uh, wealthy parents children's into Ivy League schools by like faking that they're on like the row team or like the soccer team because in every college there's basically a a spot for each um, sports team where a coach has like three basically spots held that you could put on any students Um, and he also was running a scam where if you were proven to have like a um, 
like a learning disability or some sort of like attention uh, deficit disorder, you would be able to take an untimed test, like your S- SAT. SAT yeah. That's what it is in the States. Uh, so he would basically have somebody go in and take the test for your student. They would do online courses to bump your kid's grade up, and then they'd put you on like this row team, and then you would basically get into Yale or Stanford or USC or one of these schools. That's basically how this scam worked. This guy had a ton of like super wealthy people, like the upper crust of society in like Southern California, in Texas, all over basically running this scam. They would go to him, they would pay him anywhere from like, you know, 15000 to $500,000. Uh, I think that Felicity paid fifteen, and I think Lori Lachlan paid five hundred. Yeah. So you know, mm-hmm. uh, he had a sliding scale probably if he knew what your situation was. Although I imagine Felicity Huffman and uh, who's her husband William, William H. H Macy yeah. have the cheddar. But anyway, you would pay them. They would get your kid into school. Uh, they did a sting operation because there was this guy that got busted with something completely different, and he said, "Hey, I got a tip for you if you'll lighten my sentence." <laughs> and this guy's kind of a scumbag because his own kids were up tied up in the scandal so basically (laughs) outed his own kids so he gives up the guy that runs this whole academy that gets Mm -hmm. all these kids into these schools and they run a sting for like the last six months or however long it's been they get Felicity Huffman on tape they get Lori Loughlin on tape they're the two most famous Mm -hmm. but then there's a bunch of like financiers and wealthy sort of people that are are tied up in this thing but she recently pleaded guilty uh, yesterday in fact and Uh, by the way this whole case made people very happy because everybody's assumed for a very long time that the elite bend the rules to get what they want and that has always been the case and the fact that they actually got caught for this specific thing this has a specific level of sort of enjoyment because Felicity Huffman specifically is kind of like on social media very sort of like social justice person she wants equality you know she'll tweet about things of like uh, how there's certain unfair things in society so it's interesting to be forward facing in that way publicly but then behind closed doors you're like well if there's if I can fucking cheat the system to get my kid into a school I'll do it Mm -hmm. there's like a real like duplicitous sort of nature there that I think people are like fuck these hypocrites yeah well I, well, I mean as soon as that, this came out I said this is the best news for uh, the Trump base because oh, because there is a suspicion it. in the middle of the country that these liberal Hollywood elites as much as they wave the flag of equality and as much as they talk about having a bleeding heart they are actually just as greedy as anybody else would be. They're all phonies. They're all phonies, and this thing comes out, and it's exactly what they suspected. Well, there's this sort of like position, too, that like, you know, everyone's like, oh, Trump's racist or this and that. It's like, there's a lot of people that feel like, actually, like, for wealthy people, the only like color that matters is green. Yeah. Like, they actually don't care. Money. If, yeah, you yeah. got it. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, for people in Canada, our money's not green. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Canadian listeners. Um, You've never know, heard that reference. <laughs> if you're, if you're, if, if, if you know, if you're, if you're, you're black from the Middle East or whatever, it's like they don't, they're not going to dis- discredit you or discount you based on your skin color. It's based on your social status and yeah, like your wealth. Class, yeah. They don't care. Like he'll hang out with you know s- anyone from Saudi Arabia or anybody. You know, like it's like this whole sort of thing where it's like they actually only care if you're like wealthy. And so there's a sort of like group of people protecting each other at the top. And I think to your point, this Trump base is like all these people that act about like healthcare for all and all these social things they're all still like living in gated communities and are trying to game the system hoarding their assets and gaming the system yeah. and all of that stuff so i i do get the the anger on that level i guess in just sort of like a very non-nuanced way mm-hmm. uh so um she pled guilty yesterday sure did and i thought her this is felicity huffman i thought her apology was specifically uh very strong because we live in an age of celebrity apologies whether it's me too stuff or this or a plethora of other things uh and i thought she really nailed it Do, can you read the the apology here this is her uh, after pleading guilty this was the statement she released i am in full acceptance of my guilt and with deep regret and shame over what i have done i accept full responsibility for my actions and will accept the consequences that stem from those actions i am ashamed of the pain i have caused my daughter my family my friends my colleagues and the educational community i want to apologize to them and especially i want to apologize to the students who work hard every day to get into college and to their parents who make tremendous sacrifices to support their children and to do so honestly my daughter knew absolutely nothing about my actions and in my misguided and profoundly wrong way i have betrayed her this transgression toward her and the public i will carry for the rest of my life my desire to help my daughter is no excuse to break the law or engage in dishonesty Hmm. pretty good apology yeah well worded i feel like i'm going to need to use a lot of that for tomorrow you know 
Well, what I found so impressive about it um, is that she she really takes full responsibility for it. She Her PR apologi- team took full responsibility. No, no, no. no we I'm don't gonna, know that. No, I'm going to get to that though because she she takes full responsibility for it. She apologized specifically to the people who she's affected, which are honest students and honest parents and the educational community. Um, and what what I like about it um, is that because Erica, you said her PR team did it. Every it seems like every politician or every celebrity who's apologized from some misdeed, they always get killed on their apology because because everybody reads it and goes, "You guys, you're hedging. You're not taking full responsibility. You're not really fully apologizing." The Louis for anything. C.K. apology. The Louis C.K. But go through the list. Like everybody fucks up the apology every single time because they refuse just to take full responsibility, say you're sorry with no caveats. And they all have the same advantage to have the PR team. And, and they yeah. all have the same yeah. advantage of going through drafts and drafts. You know what they always do? PR. They always go, I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I'm sorry if. Which is people never an apology. That. Yeah, exactly. It's not an apology. Yeah. Just say you're sorry. I hurt people. I'm going to work, do everything I can to make it better. And I accept full responsibility. I, do I, you forgive Felicity Huffman? Uh, yeah, I mean, with that apology... Uh, yes, I do. There's the whole other argument, too, that basically it's like the very sort of like forward facing like uh, college admissions scam is like if your parents donate a, a million dollars to the, like a library, you're getting your kids. Well, in. that's yeah, the joke the is thing. that Dr. Dre took a picture with his kid going like my girl got into USC and I ain't going to jail. But it's like Dr. Dre literally donated 70 million dollars to USC. <laughs> there's also an argument to that, though, by the way, which is actually I thought pretty. There's a great piece in uh, The Atlantic and I was going to read a piece from it, but I'm not going to just because we're running short on time. But this uh, this person wrote a, her name's Caitlin Flanagan and it's called They Had It Coming and she is a former English teacher at like a, a super like sort of elite like prep school in uh, Los Angeles then became the guidance counselor so she literally had to deal with these parents because she was sort of a gateway to get into these schools it's a fantastic piece that's what you recommend that's what I recommend and I was gonna read a piece at the end but I won't but she goes into basically when people say like well what about these parents that donate like Dr Dre or whatever she goes the difference is when a wealthy parent donates to like a wing of the school. That literally benefits multiple students. Ton of people benefit from those donations. So it actually, like, yeah. So your kid does get in, but you realize that those that money donation goes to like the overall sort of like school experience, actual supplies, actual wings, actual whatever. Sure. Um, whereas like the Felicity Huffman scandal literally only benefits her daughter, the guy that was running the scam. So if you're gonna bribe, bribe big. <laughs> yeah, well, make sure it bribe a bunch charitably. Of people. Yeah, yeah char- make sure it serves multiple. You know, the needs sure. of the many outweigh the needs of the one. Do uh, we think Felicity's daughter? Was actually not not in the know on this. I do because I think yeah. it'd be bad for your psyche. It's embarrassing. Yeah, I think she uh, her um, the second kid they they pulled out on. They weren't gonna. They didn't do it. I think. And I think her her prep SAT score was four hundred points lower than the one that was fibbed. Yeah. So she clearly needed help to get into the program. Yeah. Hey, I have a question for you guys. Uh, cause I think about this sometimes because you have kids. Um, how much like. Would you go out of your way, do you think, to help? I know this is a bigger picture question, but to help your kid like succeed or to like, to get ahead? Because I have this fantasy in my mind that I'm not going to help my kid at all. Yeah. I mean, I'll give my kid love and support, uh, but my parents, you know, they are, they're great parents and they're very loving and very supportive, but they've never said that you're special. You're, they've, or they've never said that like you're... Uh, you're worthy of anything more or the best. They, they, actually, the lore in our family is that we're very middle of the road. It's like we're like, oh, the you know, the, my mom's side, my dad's side. We're we're a solid seventy four, like <laughs> like you know, and and that and I have this fantasy of like um, you know because there's always a petitioning to get your kid into a good school district because sure. you want to have a good peer group. And I know peer groups are really important, but I have a fantasy of just throwing my kid in the, the shittiest school ever because I think it'll be a good life experience and that I'll be able to at least uh, uh, the presence of somebody who has a little bit more influence and affluence might help elevate the other kids in the school just just by having you know more resources available and time and energy uh that is often lacking in in uh schools that are a little more hard done by so um what do you guys think uh personally i pride myself on having a lot of grit Mm -hmm. and i think the reason i'm the way i am is because my parents never supported me at all really or told (laughs) me that i was good at anything or complimented me or encouraged me so I think that helped me in a way because I'm always like trying to prove something. Yeah. So like in our earlier conversation about uh, Justin Bieber's um, <laughs> that's uh, what? <laughs> no, no, no. Just just this defiant streak. I was kind of more alluding to. No, I don't even think I'm being defiant there. I think I'm in the in the okay, huge, huge majority. <laughs> oh, Max, what have you done? <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is, yeah, I'll support my daughter into anything she wants to do. I'll try to help her be the best. It's it's similar to my wife with the blog. Like I support 
support the hell out of her. I try to encourage her and I try to help her. But if she wasn't into it, like if my wife doesn't post in four days, I say, do you even want to do this? Like mm-hmm. no pressure from me. Like just, just quit. Yeah. Like why waste your time doing something that you don't like? Yeah. You're wasting so much effort into mm-hmm. something that you're not even into yeah. when you could be doing something and have fun or relax. Yeah. Um, Mike. Yeah, I mean, like, I, 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 I'll, I'll new, another question. Yeah, hit me. Am I being naive in thinking that I'm not going to treat my child like the God's gift to the world? Like, because I feel like most parents would do anything to, no, to want to well, make you, their. I think I lean, like, what's a healthy amount? You know? I lean the way you just described your parents. I think in the sense that they're sort of like, you know, I'm not going to like tell my kid that she's exceptional just because, you know, and it's like it's like I I tend to like really try to think about like you know there's parents like my kid's a genius or my kid's like a a master at the piano and it's like well are they because like (laughs) most people will be able to tell pretty quickly and I think that like I have a pretty good gauge and like enough humility and like uh, a a sense of shame that I would never sort of like try to present my child as anything other than she was like I'm not going to try and sell a false bill of goods so if if she's just like a happy-go-lucky kid that is completely average that likes playing the sandbox I'm like that's who my kid is you know, if if, mm-hmm. if if she ends up sort of being exceptional or something, I probably won't even say it then either because, like, I do want her to sort of have, like, a little bit of humbleness. Like, I, I my upbringing was very similar to Shane's. You know, it's like I think we do feel like we have something to prove because it was like there was no college fund waiting for me. There was no path. Like, you know, I sh- – I, I, you know what I mean? It was like I, I was serving at Swish LA out of high school until like this sort of magical much music thing happened for me. And it's like I don't know what my path would have been, but there's nothing laid out. She'll have a different sort of, like – opportunity than I had because I, I we will present our options and all that but I'm not going to be like uh you're the best honey and it's like fuck those other kids like you're best like get out there you're yeah the best, I'm, I'm a fight to, for you to no, get into whatever no, you want yeah. no no I think but who knows I say that now let's cut to like you know when she's 13 and I'm like you know maybe I'm you're different. coaching her basketball team and, you're, and you're I'm like, she needs more minutes she needs all the minutes yeah, yeah and it's like she can't Give even the dribble ball. Yeah. Pass, pass it to Winnie yeah. now <laughs> she, yeah. she just hates basketball yeah. like, you love it <laughs> yeah I, I think motivation's important but I think creating, creating like a fantasy world doesn't help anyone yeah all right, Max, we're we gonna get to the last topic on this thing. Nope, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just a time thing. I, for our listeners, like, how are, we, are is this like a feel thing? Are you kind of like a point guard that's just feeling out the yeah, offense? Yeah, because I think uh, there's something uh, as an, a podcast listener that's light and breezy about a 25 to 35 minute sort of more topical daily podcast, which sure. I think this uh, freedom is trying to be. Uh, and anytime you see something, it's like, oh, it's a 48 minute podcast, oh, 56 minutes, like that. That requires more of a commitment. So I, I think we're done for now. <laughs> So anyway, but you can let us know. If you're listening, tweet at us, and you can tell us if uh, if we're on the mark or what's an ideal. Like. I think with a podcast, more is never enough. But I do think that with this was a little heavy off the top, and we were about to attempt to delve into – a Kyle Corver racism topic. No, that, he no. cut that for this episode. Oh, you did? Yeah, he I was going to do SNC Labo. Oh, okay. That's going to require more time because you're very passionate about that, Erica. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> we'll get into it uh, Canadian tomorrow. Poly, yeah. Or maybe we'll have two three poly. of them this week. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, is anyone around? Uh, I'm around. Yeah. So, wait. Is it freedom? Can we squash this? Can we figure this out? That's a great question. To end yeah, what on? is it? I think... It's episode three. We should know. Because we st- we're still... Freedom is still being outvoted by... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, cre- it's, it's, cre- it's not that significant. It's creeping up in the polls. I think it's only at 10% away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you want another week of voting? No, no. I, it, there's about six hours left. Let's see what happens. But Mike had a good idea to use uh, Webby D's idea, which was to kind of take a notable quote from an episode and make that the name of the episode. Yeah. What should this quote be? I don't know. Webby D listens and he gets to decide. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a notable quote. Notable yeah. quote. There, there, there might be a good quote. Eric, notable you're gonna quotables. Source, you're going to have to source a good quote when you're, okay. when you're listening back. Notable yeah. quotables. <laughs> it's like a Jeopardy it's a good category. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it? That's it. Notable quotables. Cool. Now, the song kicks it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay.